Bonjour, and there I'll stop my French. Good morning and welcome. Uh, it's great to see you all today. I'm um, happy to see so many of you here, many of you returning, and many of you new. In the last year since I was here, it has grown, and I'm very happy with all the changes we are seeing, which is both in, in terms of size and stature of this event. In that duration, the product has grown significantly as well. And I just am here to talk to you about the innovations that we have done, and at the same time share with you how all this innovation is being adopted by the customers. Uh, therein lies our satisfaction of all that we are building. So what we are seeing is basically a socio-economic revolution. And who is revolutionizing this? It's the consumer. It's a democratization of what's actually happening across the world. And this typical rev revolutions happen because of a whole community or a nation being impacted. In this case, it's the whole globe. Every individual who has a smartphone or access to the internet is participating in this and actually driving this. And every enterprise out there is trying to cater to this consumer. Our way of life is changing. The digitization is impacting every walk of our life. Just to give you an example, whatever you do from morning to night, just think about this. You are using a digital medium to get something done. And enterprises are vying to get your attention. Either they have to transform how they do business to adapt to this change, or you will switch. Literally, it's in your grip. Either you'll swipe away or you'll click away. That's what this change is about, and that's what enterprises are transforming themselves to give you that experience. Let's look at a prototypical revolutionary or user of this system. Meet Stephanie. How does she conduct her day? Life, work, play, everything can be done. Or she's doing all of this virtually. From morning till night, she can take care of all her life needs, shopping, travel, local, or air, all using applications that are delivered to her. And she can take care of all her work needs, jump on a conference call, do her HRM stuff, payroll stuff, everything available over there. And when she gets really tired of all this stuff, she can play the Pokemon Goes and, and you know, make her reservations for an opera in the evening. Everything is possible on the web. And companies are vying to provide this kind of experience for the Stephanies of the world. These are the digital disruptors. These are the companies who are actually transforming our lives and we are demanding more and more from them. So when you really think about what is the Stephanies of the world telling us, they want rich applications which are responsive, which they can use from anywhere at any time. Put differently, they want applications which they can use simply. Hide all the complexity. Give me the stuff that I want to really get done. Don't expose me to complexity. And don't make me wait. Don't give me the run around and the hourglasses and all that stuff. Just make it responsive. And I want to use it wherever in a tunnel, channel, above the ground, while I'm flying, wherever. Make this application work. And no, I'm not going to wait for your business hours. Do the business in my terms. In one sense, that is the message. And if enterprises do not get this message and transform to that need, they will perish. That will be the digital divide in which they will fall. So how do you do this? You know. All this because of the types of applications that are being developed and delivered, which are enabling you to do the kind of stuff you were not able to do before, or able to do stuff which are meaningfully more efficient. And these are the web, mobile, and IoT applications. You need to get to the user using whatever channel. It's the omni-channel strategy that you have to adopt to get to them, because they are not coming to you, because there are so many other applications vying for their attention, and they'll switch away from you. So you need to get to them, whether it be through a mobile device, through a browser, to a set-top box, wherever they are, you get your service in front of them. 
And if you are to build this web, mobile, or IoT application, where will you start? You will start with where, what you have right now. And limiting this discussion only to the data landscape, what you will start with is a relational system where you will somehow try to fit in your complex objects and put them into tables and columns. You'll quickly find that the performance isn't quite there, so you'll add a cache. In one shot, you've introduced now one of the most difficult problems to solve in computer science, which is cache invalidation. Let that pass. You'll quickly find, if your application is adopted, that they're looking for quicker ways to get to the information. So you'll add a search system, beautiful, yet another copy of the data, which you'll now have to manage three systems from the application tier. And you want to provide more service to the consumer in terms of what orders they place, when do they place. You want some simple web analytics. So you'll set up an ODS store the operational data store where you can done this reporting. And now the service has taken on, so you want to look at patterns. What are the consumer's patterns? What do they buy? What do they not buy? So you will set up a traditional warehousing system. And at some point you will say that, well, that insight is not good enough. I want to do more. So introduce Hadoop into the equation. Somewhere along the way, somebody will come and tell you we need a mobile initiative. And somehow band-aids, and whatever you could do, you'll stick some, some, put some things together and now you have a mobile solution. If you are the owner of a service which consumers want, you're looking at five nines uptime. And if you look at this, what you're actually managing, you need a prayer for this system to be up there standing up for five nines availability to the consumer. Anything can go wrong. And don't bet against Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will. So if you look at this scenario, it definitely is going to give a lot of sleepless nights to the person who owns this. The DevOps, the CTO, CIO, whoever is the final decision maker is really looking to manage risk at some point. You cannot introduce so many things and sort of do all this integration and expect things to just stand up and work magically. But this is the evolution. All these were required. All these were built with assumptions that were built before this revolution. So if you want to stand up a system which is going to support this revolution, it, can't, it cannot be this evolutionary system. You're making do with this. This is good. Without this, the next step won't happen. But this is where you are right now. What you need to go beyond to look at the modern approach and to restate the problem in terms of uh, system, systemic terms, what this modern approach means when someone talks about a rich application, it comes down to giving the flexibility to build the application quickly, to adapt to the market conditions. And in order for you to do that at the data tier, that's where it starts, because if a new business requirement comes up or a new competition comes up, you need to deliver a new feature to catch up to that. A new feature in the application means a new object definition. The object definition changes, and now you have to change your data model to that. And if there is like an object relational impedance happening, every time you want to change a relational schema, you will call a subcommittee of people who will debate whether to add that column to the table or not, and by that time, the opportunity is gone. So you need that f schema flexibility to enable you from the business requirement change to the application change, to business object change, to the data layer change, it should happen magically. That's the first and foremost thing. This is what will enable the agility of business to develop the application first. Now you develop the application, that's good, but Stephanie is telling you she wants the application to be responsive. If you want it responsive, and there are billions of Stephanies that you will have to cater to, if you use the traditional disk-oriented architectures, you know the lags. This has to be a modern rethink on that because the underlying stuff has changed. Memory is cheaper than when those, we built those relational systems because back then disks were more expensive than where memory is now. And networks are way faster now. So you got to leverage the memory and the network to give you guaranteed performance at scale. That's when you achieve quickness because if Stephanie gets it quickly and Stefan gets it too late, you're not, you're not going to be a success. Every user is expecting those milliseconds and microsecond response times. So you need to build those systems which are memory and network centric. 
they want this service to be running from anywhere, whether they are deep underground or flying in the sky. How do you do that? Traditionally, people talk about network connectivity being available, not available. That is true. But what they are really asking for is an always-on application. How do you enable that? It's by transporting data to where they are, instead of having them come to where you're keeping your data in your firewall, behind a firewall someplace in the enterprise. So you have to transport data to the point of where they are actually using it. That's where mobile solutions come in, because the smart device you're carrying actually has more power than the systems that used to sit in data centers 20, 20 years ago. So it can do a lot more crunching of the data. It can do a lot more intelligent work. So ship the data over there, and they can actually use it there. That's when you get the always-on capability. Or it's, a, it's going to be a world of continuous services running in the cloud with occasionally connected devices that people will use where the data will magically transport. You don't know. You shouldn't care. Is the data sitting locally or is the data sitting in the cloud? The system will take care of it. So you've got to have a mobile approach a priori. You cannot make that an afterthought. And any time. This is a big one. This is where the operational characteristics of your system have to be very different. In one sense, what they're saying is, do not take the service down if you have to add extra capacity. Do not take the service down if you have to upgrade something or patch something or data availability requirements. You need to have these things pre-built so that upgrades go smooth, additional capacity happens seamlessly where all these services are running and you're giving the 5-9 uptime while all this stuff is happening in the background. So build a system that allows you to do all this stuff. You are not going to carry your pagers and mobile phones and then say that, oh, three-hour downtime because I need to upgrade something. Because that three-hour downtime is prime time somewhere in the world. And you need to cater to those users. So this is the modern approach that you need to look at. What is the system that allows you to build that? And that's precisely the problem we are trying to solve here at Couchbase. We are building one platform with a unified programming model and a unified administration in which you can stand up an application that allows you to reach the consumer the multi-channel way. So what does that mean? Your application has multiple characteristics. You cannot, one size doesn't fit all. So you need a platform which is flexible which allows you to do multiple things in one. And you can do this because it's a re rethink. If you start from where things were, it will look like you have somehow put all these things together. But no, you have to re-architect foundationally differently. When you do that, many things come together. It's like looking at your smartphone. It's 40 devices into one. And why is that possible? Because it was a rethink of a, what a phone ought to be. If you tell your kids that there was a time when you couldn't listen to music on the phone, they'll be looking at you like crazy. How is that possible? How is it that you cannot listen to music? You cannot do uh, navigation? It's all one device. But that's possible. And that's what the system is. It's about showing you what the possibility in the future is. Because many of us have lived the database life. We've built relational systems and systems before that. And we know what optimizations had to be done back then and what is it that you can do now. So you will have applications which have s simple patterns of a key value access. You'll have application which requires a straightforward database query kind of an application, select something from somewhere with all the predicate logic that you want to apply there. You will have systems where you will have to worry about data location. I have users coming from EMEA or Asia or US, and how do I get the data closer to them so you have to build a system that caters to these needs. And then the mobility is already a P0 requirement that you have to build. So you need a platform that allows you to build a system that caters to the need of the modern application. And to that platform, which we've had so far, last year I was here talking to you all about the Nickel query language, which is our SQL interface that allows you to treat it like a standard database. So to use an analogy, what we have really done is build a car, except switch out the engine. It's like an electric car. You get in there and drive the way you always drive. There is a steering wheel, there is a gear, there are gas pedals, which is like your SQL. 
you know what to do with this. That's the standard language for serious databases. We have kept that. What we have done underneath is switch out the system, the engine. You don't need to care about that. If you open under the hood, you will not see the usual parts that you would see in an internal combustion based uh, engine. You will see the new electric engine. That's the scale out and scale up architecture that we have underneath, which is memory and network based, which is distributed, shared nothing architecture with no single point of failure. That is the foundational architecture in which we have put all this stuff. And this allows you to do one thing that is really modern, which is these days of elastic deployment in your data centers, you want to be able to scale your system to your needs. You know, when you have a, inside a database, you typically have three basic things, a data index and query. Search is another kind of a query, if you will. Each have different characteristics. Data is very IO intensive. Query is very CPU intensive and index is very uh, memory intensive. So you should be able to tune different parts of the system based on these needs. Put, select a set of nodes in this cluster and give it more SSDs wherever you're going to keep the data. On the query nodes, give it more CPU. On the index node, give it more memory. You don't need to optimize to the lowest common denominator. You have this flexibility and you can do this in the elastic deployments that you will have uh, in these modern data centers which, where everything is virtualized. So that's the new platform to that. With 4.5, which we released about a month or so ago, we are adding search. So this is a case of where information retrieval and data retrieval are coming in the same platform. This is the standard search that you're used to, which is basically the term-based search that we're introducing here. This is where you do the lexicographical analysis of the data that is coming in and you taxonomize it and store it. That's the indexing part of it, where you can do a lot of magic with the system. And then there is the querying part of it where you can do exact match, phrase match, fuzzy logic match, Boolean match, uh, disjunction, conjunction. The, there's a whole lexicon behind what a search system requires. We have built that in addition to the the SQL structured query that you can do, where you can do your select stars from, you can do this kind of looking up of terms. So back in the day, the information retrieval and databases went in two different directions. By doing, re-architecting this, we can bring them back together. That's what we are sort of introducing with 4.5. It's in developer preview. So all developers here, please download, play with it, have fun with it. The whole idea is to build a system that is easy, fun to play with and build value to it. And not make it clunky and difficult to work with. So this is one platform where you can now do search and query. So that's a small takeaway. So instead of you managing two systems of a search where you have to crawl all the data, put somewhere else, and eventually you'll find the information. Now the moment the data goes into the database, it can be stemmed, it can be, the inverted index can be created, and now we can query on that data. That's the system that we have here. Not only did we introduce this major thing, there are other great innovations we have introduced in 4.5. Uh, I'll name a few, few of those. Uh, powerful querying tools. We have a web-based uh, query workbench where you can introspect the data. It has always been difficult to look in NoSQL systems to find the data that you have. How big is your database? You always have to go stand next to a developer and have them write a little program for you to look at the data. Because of SQL, you can simply go to our web console, issue a query, select star from my bucket, and give me a count star of that. It'll tell you exactly what is sitting. You can inspect the schema even. We have schema inference tools. So this is basically transforming. So you can look at, if you are coming with the mindset of Couchbase is a NoSQL system, and what the hell is this SQL talk? The problem is nomenclature. When they meant NoSQL was non-relational or remove the schema rigidity, and nobody had any problem with SQL per se. So you need a language which can describe. And SQL is a very powerful thing because it's made based on some great math behind it. And our nickel, N1QL, is the query language which allows you to do this, which leverages that deep algebraic principles uh, of set theory to build this correctly. So for the first time, you have a query language because the underneath data model has fundamentally changed. All those databases out there, they keep talking about providing support for JSON. 
they're treating it as a data type. We are not. We are treating JSON as a new document model. That is a difference. And why JSON? Because it's, to use a term here, it's the lingua franca of the web. And that's why it is. Because the entire web talks to each other, how it transports the data is using JSON. And so it makes sense to build a query language that can introspect the JSON. So every element in the JSON can be indexed and queried. That's what's built there. Now you have a query workbench from where you can issue those and take a look at uh, the data that is sitting in there. And the schema inference will tell you what is the kind of structure of the data that is sitting in there. We've added the memory optimized index capability. Uh, I was describing to you how performance is important and the key value side can do millions of ops per second. Now, if you have such high ingestion rates, how do you build the secondary index? which are all trees, and you know, manipulating trees is a complex, complex thing to do. So we have built this on a foundationally different framework, which, which is called lockless skip list. That is deep computer science, so I won't bore you with those details. But at the end of the day, what it does is gives you concurrency of rights. So you can actually do a lot of ingestion, and the secondary indexing system will keep up with it. And why is that important? Because your queries are that much faster now, because of this memory optimized indexes. We have published papers on this, which were accepted by IEEE and BLDB kind of organizations. Feel free to search, find, and use that to get to understand what the system is about. On the mobile front, we have add, added gateway to gateway replication. And that enables us to cater to all the needs of the IoT deployments, where you can have multiple types of topologies, star and mesh and whatnot. So this allows us to have those deployments because you cannot truly predict what the customer topology will, requirements will be. You will see later what kind of usage we are seeing over there. And in every release, security is a mainstay. We keep improving the security because more and more mission critical and business critical data is sitting in Couchbase. So our customers have to go through security audits, PCI and whatnot. And so these security requirements are to conform to that. We have, with 4.5, added role-based access control, LDAP integration, and uh, OAuth kind of support on the mobile side where you can figure out how you want to authenticate with other secure systems over there. So a lot has gone into the product, and that is what's enabling a lot of the enterprise-grade customers to adopt this product. So we are building a lot of stuff. We love to innovate. We love to iterate. We love to uh, bring... Uh, foundational enhancements to the product. All that is good, but where we derive our satisfaction is when customers actually use it to solve their problems. It's all good to say that we build great technology, but until it is used to solve a problem, until it almost exceeds our expectations, or it surprises how far our customers can take this, um, I think that's where the game changes for us. Let me talk to you about a few of those scenarios that we find to be sort of mind-boggling. First, it's happening right here in France, Crateo. And they have beautiful offices out here. On one side, you can see the, the Sacre Coeur. On the other side, you can see the Eiffel Tower. It's a beautiful place. And they're doing something amazing. Uh, I've worked with Nicola for a couple of years now. I hope he's here. If not, I think Pierre is going to be talking later. So I won't steal all their thunder. You should listen from them, because no matter what I say, you'll say, oh, the vendors keep talking. So listen from them, how they have done it. But what is mind-boggling for me is the scale at which this thing is operating. They are disrupting the digital advertising space. And they're doing that because they want guaranteed performance at scale. And that is something they can achieve with Couchbase because of the memory and network-centric architecture. You can see. They've deployed more than 1,300 Couchbase nodes with more than 100 clusters, and they are servicing 25 million queries per second. That's not a typo there. 25 million queries per second, which is like nanosecond response times is what they want. Because every query out there is a commercial transaction, an ad being placed or ad being clicked through. So you can imagine uh, the business criticality of this whole thing. And they're standing this up because of the scale out architecture. You can add more memory and more capacity by just chaining more boxes to the cluster. So that's one case of the 
web scale performance that is required. Now let's look at the mobile space. What is the change that's happening over there? Emirates this year was rated the number one airline. So the game is changing over there. And how they are transforming is using technology to better the customer experience. They're going to touch 50 million of their users by, in a nutshell, eliminating that attendant call button. That's what they want to eliminate. It's a digital transformation, so you take something physical out and do it digitally. So if I were to summarize this, they want to take that call button out so you don't have to hit the call and wait endlessly for attendant to show. Things should happen magically for you. They use the pursers inside the, in, in, in the flight who will basically communicate and get your needs and orders uh, fulfilled magically because they use the peer-to-peer -peer capability between what an attendant can do and what has to go back in the galley, including your duty-free, your, your drinks, your meals. Everything is catered to by using this transformative technology. And this is happening when there is no network uh, to the, when you're in flight. It's not in, uh, in touch with the data center. So all of this is happening in an occasionally connected manner between digital devices. But when the plane lands, all this information is then synced back to their data centers. Now they can find intelligence and do further analytics and stuff like that. So that's how the customer experience, they want to improve that from the moment you hit the airport curb on your, um, when you come into the, uh, for your travel, all the way until you exit. At that point, I think Uber takes over. So any which way, digitalization will help you. Now, the IoT space. Here, GE, if you see the ads that GE has these days in the US, it says it's industrial and digital. It's peanut butter and jelly, it goes on like that. So it's basically that, that transformation of being industrial and digital. They have built a new platform called Predix for it. This is for the digital internet. And in that, they have Predix Mobility, which is the platform that is powered by Couchbase Stack, which is the Couchbase server, which is actually fronting mainframe kind of workloads with a sync gateway in the middle and devices which are going to be in the hands of uh, utility people who would be traveling to places where they have minimum network availability. They use this in the G has built this platform so many other companies to come and use this. But internally, some of the G businesses that use this are their railroad system, where their inspectors go to the rail yards and see where their uh, carriages are. If they are not used uh, optimally. They make a note of it in their tablets. They come back to their offices where there is network availability, and now you can optimize which carriages and bogies need to be on which trains so they can optimize their resources. Or when a hurricane or a natural calamity hits someplace, they typically end up with having to manage the power and um, telephones and other uh, utilities. They send out inspectors to go see what the damage is so that they can send the right kind of crews over and that is done uh, offline and when they come back, that information is now analyzed and they send the right crews over. So this is how each one of this is impacting you, the customer, because how long you're going to be without having, you have to live without power and utilities is now reduced because of these kind of technologies being enabled and deployed. And all of this stuff is basically built on one platform. And that's where the, the magic is. And that is where the simplicity of this is. And that is what these leaders and all these verticals that you heard Bob mentioned earlier are using Couchbase to transform their businesses. And it's one platform that can do a scale up or a scale out architecture, that can do a structured query or a search. It can act as a cache and a database. It can manage unstructured and structured data. It can do many of the stuff that you required multiple systems earlier to come together and manage. And it gives us great satisfaction when these customers deploy this at these scales, at these transformative stages in their business. It is with great humility and great pleasure to work with such customers. And I look forward to working with many more of you in the years to come. Thank you. Now, all this is 
when we do all this stuff, one of the most critical components out there is how to help our customers. One of the people who stand in the foremost, the forefront of all of this is our technical support team. So let me introduce Ian McLoy, who will walk you through how we support our customers be successful. Welcome, Ian. <laughs>